Shabbat Shalom to everyone. When we were like five of six, it, it was empty, and then people just started coming in. It's magic at work. It's magic. Thanks for being here. I want to offer or give you a short quiz, and I don't want you to answer out loud. I just want you to give yourself a, your own score, okay? What is the name of Moses' father? Amram. Who is an, what is the name of Moses' mother? Yocheved. Just score yourself if you know these things, and don't tell me. Which sons of Aaron were killed by alien, offering alien fire on the altar? Nadav and Avihu. When was the first time that God directly revealed God's presence to Moses? The burning bush. Where were the patriarchs buried, or are they buried? The cave of Machpelah. Um, you, can go, you can still visit it, although it's dangerous. Who was the prophet who forced King David to admit his sins? Nathan. Which prophet said, he has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you to act, to act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God? Micah. Who did Moses, Abraham marry after the death of Sarah? Keturah. What is the name of the uncle Laban who mistreated him? What's the name of the uncle of Jacob who mistreated him? Laban. What did Potiphar's wife accuse Joseph of? Sexual assault. Okay. Who built the first temple? King Solomon. How are we doing? Um, what are the names of Adam and Eve's three children? Cain, Abel, and Seth. So how did we do? What'd you say? I got Seth. Okay, you got Seth. Okay. So, so no, this isn't this isn't an easy test. Um, but if a person is reasonably knowledgeable about the Hebrew Bible, um, they could do relatively well. Now, the test raises three questions for me. Um, could um, our average religious school student and say Kansas City, could they answer these questions? Is it even important they can answer these questions? Is this knowledge important to each child to know? Second, could the average member of the temple answer these questions? It all depends on how important Jewish literacy is. Third, and this is a question I want to focus upon, should biblical literacy be an important part of the humanities curriculum of our school, school children? And of course, learning based on age appropriateness. Now, as this is, not, no, this is no great secret, if you looked at the newspaper on Monday, and I think it was an editorial the next day or the day after, there is something that's going on in the state of Missouri uh, that, uh, that was covered pretty well in, in the papers. Missouri lawmakers passed a bill, and I don't know if, if Parsons has signed it yet, I'm sure he will, um, passed a bill which would allow public schools to offer elective courses in the Bible. And the legislation was filed by the state senator, Carla May, a St. Louis Democrat, allowing public schools and, and public charter schools to offer elective social studies classes, including but not limited to the Hebrew scriptures, the Holy Testament, the, the, the Old Testament of the Bible, the New Testament of the Bible. So how did it do in, in the, the uh, state Senate assembly? It passed the Missouri Senate unanimously by 31 to 0 in March. And then, with just a little more than an hour left in this year's session, and with practically no debate, the House voted 108 to 30 to send the bill to Governor Parsons. And I don't know the course of it at this point. So um, I read this, and I started thinking about it. And so I said, well, let me find the legislation. It's amazing what, what Google does. It's unbelievable. Uh, so it's not that long. So I think we should, before we have a, com a commentary on it, let's, let's just know what it says. It's short, but to get to exactly where the bill actually fits in, who voted for it, it's very hard. I mean, it's really hard. I mean, so it, transparency in state government is not very good. I mean, if you want to know something, it's, it's hard to get there, but I got there. So here it is. 
170.341, one, any school district or public charter school may offer students elective social studies courses relating, but not limited to the following. The Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament of the Bible, two, the New Testament of the Bible, or three, the Hebrew scriptures in the New Testament of the Bible. Number two, the purpose of a course under this section is to, one, teach students knowledge of the biblical content, characters, poetry, and narratives that are prerequisites to understanding contemporary society and culture, including literature, art, music, mores, oratory, and public policy. Two, familiarize students with, as applicable, the contents of the Hebrew Scriptures or New Testament. B, the history of the Hebrew Scriptures or New Testament. C, the literary style and structure of the Hebrew Scriptures or the New Testament. And D, the influence of the Hebrew Scriptures or New Testament on law, history, government, literature, art, music, customs, mor morals, values, and culture. So far, so good. Number three. A student shall not be required to use a specific translation as a sole text of the Hebrew Scriptures or New Testament and may use as a basic textbook a different translation of the Hebrew Scripture or New Testament from that chosen by the school district or public charter school. This is really interesting for the Jews because the Jews have our own translation of, of, say, of the Tanakh, of the Hebrew Bible, specifically the Torah. It's, it's different than King James Version or the re Revised Standard Version, whatever. So if a Jewish child was studying, he, could, he or she could bring in their own, their own version, okay? Or the Hebrew Bible itself. A course offered under the section shall follow applicable law and all federal state guidelines in maintaining religious neutrality and accommodating the diverse religious views traditions and perspectives of the students in the school. A course offered under this section shall not endorse, favor, or promote, or disfavor, or show hostility towards any particular religion or non-religious faith or religious perspective. Finally, school districts and public charter schools in complying with this section shall not violate any provision of the Constitution of the United States or federal law, the Constitution of Missouri or any state law, or any administrative regulations of the Department of Elementary and School Education or the United States Department of Education. That's, that's it, okay? Okay, I have two reactions, okay? First, I think the teaching of Hebrew scriptures in the New Testament to students as part of the humanities studies in this context is good and very good. A lack of knowledge of Hebrew scriptures in the New Testament limits students' under, understanding of history and Western civilization and it also limits their ability to understand religious diversity. Okay, so I really think it's a great idea. My second reaction is, this scares the hell out of me. And they're not contradictory. They really balance each other. It doesn't scare the hell out of me in, in theory, but it scares the hell out of me in practice. The legislation at first is flawed. It should be amended to go beyond Judaism and Christianity. It should encourage the study of, of sacred texts such as the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, the Hindu sacred text, or whatever sacred texts are related to, to religions. But that's something, that's another topic really, and, and the fact of the matter is everything that's written in this, in this law is already permitted. There's nothing written here that's not already permitted. Now, Christian fundamentalists might have shot themselves into the foot, in the foot, because non-Christians now come, can come back to them and say, why didn't you include this? And maybe we'll show them what they're, what, what's underneath this. But I don't think this, the woman who proposed it was a, it was a Christian fundamentalist, but I, I really don't know. Do we have an education system, teachers, curriculum, a strong under, who have a strong understanding of the topic and separation of, of church and state? What training do these teachers need to have? Being part of a church Bible study group is not qualifications. And in our fundamentalist religious atmosphere, what does one do when a student tries to use these texts for religious purposes? This is where I would find it rather interesting. If, say a child comes in who's, they can bring in whatever faith they want and they, and they're, and they try to use the text to kind of they're not understanding what this course is really about, and they try to witness. 
So if you're a teacher, how do you shut that down without creating all kinds of chaos? All these issues concern me, but they are not in and of themselves a reason not to offer Hebrew scripture and Old Testament study in, in schools, in my opinion. Now, so I started investigating this a little bit, and I'm, I started asking, are there any, is there any agreement among liberal people, that's the only way to describe it, um, among people who, are, who have a kind of liberal, in a small L and a, in a large L view of, of reality? And I found this document that's fascinating. It's called The Bible in Public Schools, A First Amendment Guide. And it was published by the National Bible Association, the First Amendment Center. And then you look at the people who, who endorsed it, and it gets really interesting. It says the American Federation of Teachers, the American Jewish Committee, the Anti-Defamation League, the Baptist Joint Committee on Public Affairs, which is a very strong organization fighting for, um, for um, religious, the separation of church and state, the, the Council of Islamic Education, the National Association of Evangelicals, and our organization, the Union of Reform Judaism. They've all endorsed this document, so you're wondering what's in the document. I'm gonna share a couple of things with you. Of course, it's agreeing with everything I just said. It says, the Supreme Court has held that public schools may teach students about the Bible as long as such teaching is presented objectively as part of a secular program of education. You're, you're, okay, it's a social studies course. How is it to be taught? Any class about the Bible must be taught in an objective academic manner. The class should neither promote or disparage religion, nor should it be taught from a particular sectarian point of view. And then it says, um, who teaches the class? And it goes on to say that it, um, a superintendent or school board should select teachers of a class about the Bible in the same manner all other teachers are selected. They have to have qualifications in, in the academic subject rather than their religious beliefs or non-beliefs. It's not all because you, you read the Bible doesn't make you qualified. You have to somehow have studied the Bible in a, in a methodical, scientific way to be able to teach the class. Let me go, and so, let me, let me just end this part of the of this document with what it says and what it doesn't say. It says, how does, how should we teach religion in public schools? And it says, the school's approach to religion is academic, not devotional. The school may strive for student awareness of religions, but should not pass for student acceptance of any religion. The school may sponsor study about religion, but may not sponsor the practice of religion. The school may expose students to the diversity of religious views, but may not impose, discourage, and encourage any particular view. The school may educate about all religions, but may not promote or denigrate any religion. The school may inform the student about various beliefs, but should not seek to conform, uh, to conform him or her to any particular belief. And it's, it's really interesting, Doc. I'll, I'll, I'll let you have this if anyone, anyone is really interested in it. Um, but it's basically a document that says you can teach, but there are boundaries that you have to, that you have to follow. Now, this legislation, as I said, says nothing new. You can already do everything that the legislation says. But here is our dilemma in our time. We're so fearful that we cannot find common ground about anything. Here seems to, our, here seems to be the choice that we set up about religion in our society. No religion or theocracy. I mean, that, there, there doesn't seem any discussion. No religion or theocracy. Um, the idea of separation of church and state has been, I mean, which, I, which we Jews, of course, and people of all faiths should take very seriously, is extremely important. But that doesn't mean you can never have a discussion of religion in the public square. It doesn't mean you can't have any discussion or study of religion in academic institutions. I don't think, I think it's a misunderstanding of the whole idea of what religion is supposed to be in the United States. We, we suspect that all people of faith have an agenda. Sometimes yes and sometimes no. Now, 
I'm, I'm just speaking for my own. I'm, I didn't discuss it with Jane, who's here. Uh, I'm, but I'm just speaking for my own, my own view of things here. If my children were in public school in Missouri, I would encourage them to take these classes. I would, I would monitor these classes like a hawk. I mean, and I'd probably deep down saying I'd love for the teacher to, to screw up. I'd love to hammer them. Now, I took a Bible as literature. Did anyone take Bible in, in high school as literature? Was your whole life destroyed? I took a Hebrew scripture in New Testament classes as an undergraduate. These courses were enlightening. There was no hint of religious agenda. And I would encourage our NRT students to take these classes. And I would be challenging, and, and, and it would be challenging. It would stimulate them. And indeed, it might stimulate them to think more seriously about religion. Indeed, I believe that the struggle with this issue in our school system has a positive purpose. It forces us to ask, how inclusive are we? How inclusive are we? Is, is religion always about indoctrination, or can it ever be about some kind of serious reflection about what is the meaning of Western civilization and the things that make it up? Our founding fathers knew the Bible. Why is somehow ignorance of the Bible seen as a public good now? Is one religion right, another wrong? Of course not. This debate has been part of our national discussion from the very beginning. Now, I want students to read everything. Aristotle, Homer, Shakespeare, Roth, John Locke, Machiavelli, the Baal Shem Tov, Freud, Marx. I don't want them to read Snapchat, which is a lot more dangerous than the Bible. Trust me. And if parents don't want their kids to take these courses, don't let them take it. That's their decision. In my opinion, that would be wrong. So we need fertilized minds, and scripture should be part of it. And all because something is hard and complex doesn't mean that it isn't worth pursuing.